behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from playing sports to exotic whips. Ain't gotta tell me, dog. I know I'm the shit behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from music exec to this podcast. Now I finally feel at home and left behind the bar. Yo, you are now rocking with the best. This is Behind the Baller. The deeper look, not probe, into my actual life. No filters, no ducktails, no apologies. My name is Ben Baller, not Ben Humble. What's good, Ben Baller Podcast Army? This is episode 48. Um, before we begin, let me say this truly, deeply, and with my most sincere voice. We have been charting in the top 100 for the last three months, even on days when I don't have a new episode. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. You have followed me into something I love doing. This is a full-time job, pretty much, and it's only done between the free time I have between my actual real jobs. That is, of being a father, being a jeweler, and of course, being a business owner and entrepreneur. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you for listening. Thank you even more for subscribing. We grow a little to a lot each week. And I was going to have a guest today, but I just got to my hotel suite in San Diego, and I'm fucking just beat. I'm, I'm dead. I'm so fucking tired. I'm in my ball shorts. Um, you know, no t-shirt, belly gut hanging out, and it's just time to go on a solo mission. And again, send thanks and appreciation to all of you, to the many, the 50 plus thousand who listen to every episode bi-weekly or weekly, or those who listen part-time and then binge listen on the weekends. Thank you so much, very much. I am so grateful Eventually, this will be a top 10 podcast. I think it has the potential to definitely be a top 10 podcast. Um, That Aria Price episode got insanely great feedback, and she really put it down. I want to revisit and uh, get her back on the show later in this year. Next week, I have another lady boss. By the um, Her name is uh, Jen Meyer. She happens to be another jeweler to the stars. Um, This time, she is a jeweler to the A-list female celebs. Um, she makes jewelry for people like Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Jessica Alba, like super big timers like that. And uh, I just can't wait to talk shit with my friend Jen. So now I just finished shooting an eight hour day, full day commercial with DPA. That's the Diamond Producers Association. And they're affiliated with the largest diamond suppliers on this planet. Yes, that means De Beers and more. Um, it was a fucking honor not only to be recognized and chosen by them to be a part of this real is rare campaign, but to be rewarded as well. We shot a day in the life of Ben Baller and usually I hate doing these types of shoots, but I've done them before. It's just been a long time. Um, I haven't done one in over a decade except for, you know, my reality TV show and that's different. Um, so I actually let these people, I allowed them into my home into my store, into my vault, my factory. You know, I really let them just get a real deep look inside. And we discussed diamonds from A to Z, literally. And then when it was all done and we wrapped, I sat in a fucking hour of traffic to get home. I had to go grab the washed up van and scoop up my world star hip hop fam. And we smashed down to San Diego from my man Q World Stars Memorial. As today, as you listen to this podcast, it is the third anniversary of his passing. I'll speak more on Q in a little moment. But on the way here, we stopped at Raising Cane's. And let me tell you, I I don't really get to hit Raising Cane's that much. And let me, I don't know what it was tonight, but that shit was hitting. Fuck, it was so delicious to levels of like, I can't even tell you if I've even had chicken strips that were even $30 that tasted that good. It was just smacking. We was in the car just... We was doing 105 in the minivan, drinking sweet tea. We was on motherfucking 22s. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Van Culture. 
And uh, anyways, now I'm talking shit live and direct from the Gas Lab District. Are you ready for this motherfucking show? All right. Well, let's fucking go. Yeah, that's my man, Lakey Lake, on instrumentals. So check game. I know some of y'all finally watched that Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix. Well, now it's time to watch it on Discovery ID. ID does a way better job on actually showing the crimes that Aaron committed. It doesn't focus on his sexuality and all that other shit, but it's crazy. Um, Things that were shown on the ID documentary weren't shown in the Netflix doc, like... I don't want to spoil it for you, but it just there's just like much more in-depth investigations. They got the actual police. Fucking Ian Rappaport was on there. I'm still wondering why the fuck he killed Odin Lloyd. You know, this is also a three-part series. Um, I'm about to watch episode two after I finish this podcast. Um, it just dropped, I think, two days ago or something. And I think part three drops next week. But make sure you check that shit out. Um, yes, the Grammys are this weekend, but I don't give a fuck. Um, I truly hate the climate of music today. Um, you know, that Billie Eilish, whatever, I don't know how to pronounce it, Eilish. You know, she's kind of dope, but at the same time, I kind of hate her entire fucking existence. And people are like, oh, you're a fucking hater, you're a boomer. You know, no, I don't give a fuck, all right? But you know who's fly? Alina Baraz. She She's sexy. The music is sexy. I'm sorry. I want to say it like that, like she's sexy. Um, I don't even know what she looks like like that. I'm not really sure. Anyways, my wife put me on to her music. You should definitely check her out. Anyways, back to the Grammys. It's super fucking dope that they're doing an entire tribute to my boy, my bro, Nipsey Hussle. Yes, my bro. Yes, I knew him. Yes, I broke bread with my guy. Yes, I knew him before he was lukewarm in the streets. Fact check that. Um, I hope Tyler wins a Grammy. Only because it's so fucking important to him and he's been wanting one for so goddamn long. I mean, he deserves it, that's for sure. Um, but do you know what is better than the Grammys and is happening this weekend? Well, actually on Monday. Um, Monday is my 47th birthday. Uh, I'm 50-50. I do not think I'm going to be doing a weekend wrap-up. Um, we'll see. But what I will not be also doing is going to a goddamn club. I will not go do a club, period. I'm not going to be really doing shit for my birthday. Well, that's kind of a lie. On um, Well, this weekend, I, I rented out a small venue for 35 people. Um, we're not going to do much. going to eat, drink, chill. Um, I won't tell you what else because then you'll know where it is. And I don't need any more drama, even though we got security. Uh, but I had to opt out on a club. Sorry to my birthday mate, my birthday twin, Dorothy Wang. I just couldn't do it, Dorothy. I just couldn't. I just can't enter a fucking LA nightclub or LA bar. I just fucking can't. But now, you know what? Let's talk real quick about some shit that's giving me anxiety. Every day this fucking week, there has been a random shooting. Right. And, you know, in fact, it started two weeks ago. Someone on Fairfax and Melrose was shot and killed. And I'm like on the block, like where we used to fucking, I used to hang right across the street from my high school. Like someone got fucking killed. Like this shit is, what the fuck is going on? You know? And then a few days ago, just a few days ago, someone was shot and killed. Well, a fight broke out first inside Javier's in Century City. Do you know what the fuck Javier's is? Do you know where Century City is? I mean, it's not just Beverly Hills adjacent. This is actually the sister city, and it is also a very affluent area. Are you fucking kidding me? All right. Javier's is like the only five star Mexican restaurant in the country. Okay. It's not Mastro's, but it's pretty close. Okay. It's the nicest you can get when it comes to Mexican cuisine, and dumb fucks are blasting gats outside in fucking Century City, the Century City Mall. Like, this is crazy. This is, they. It, what is it, 1987? Fuck, man. Then, yesterday in Las Vegas, a semi-mass shootout happened inside Fashion Show Mall. 
And I think someone died there as well. And I was just there a month ago. You know what I mean? I used to frequent this mall. In fact, anytime I'm in Las Vegas, I hit that mall up. I hope my man 2J's is uh is okay. He has a uh, fuck urban necessities inside the fashion show mall. This is fucking crazy. All right. A little before midnight last night, a short earthquake hit the San Fernando Valley, and that's really close to LA. It's super close to West Hollywood, of course, to Hollywood Hills. I felt that shit like a jolt, all right? I was wide awake, about to lay down, and I heard something hit my roof. It like hit it like, like boom, real hard. It was like a super sharp hit, and I was like, what the fuck? I thought somebody was jumping on my roof, like trying to break in. So like literally in less than six seconds, I had my Glock cocked, ready, one in the chamber, and my wife and I began to look at the cameras. I started looking at the security cameras, and we couldn't see shit. You know, it would show, even if it was a bird movement, there's no movement anywhere. So I go on Twitter, my wife thought it might have been an earthquake, and yeah, sure it was, 3.6 on the Richter scale. Um, it was an earthquake. And now as I'm recording this podcast, the only other city that I've actually owned real estate in, which is Seattle, aka the Emerald City, just had a massive fucking shootout where bullets were being sprayed everywhere and they're flying down third and pine street this is fucking prime downtown seattle what the fuck is going on like this is an area i walk all the time when i'm in seattle so i don't know this is still really new uh they're saying six are injured so far in the hospital i don't know what are the casualties but i really pray that everyone knows okay as i'm recording this actual podcast right in front of me Next to the fucking H6 Zoom recorder is my fucking Sig Sauer. It's my little personal carry, the laser sight, 380, because I can't trust shit anymore. The world has no empathy, and we've just all gone mad. Like, this is just fucking crazy. Anyways, with that said, I need to take a break, and then we're going to get into some fan questions since we missed them last week. Check it out. I've told you guys before that I don't like to use the word fan or fans in regards to me or my life because even as a master jeweler and people being fans of my work or whatever, I just think it's awkward for me to accept that fact. Like, I don't know. I just that I have fans. You know, I guess it's, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just weird, you know, being washed up and all that shit. But now with this podcast, I realize that I do have fans, I have some fans. And by the way, again, let me say I adore each and every one of you even the haters and the haters are actually my biggest fans and even those who ask me stupid questions all right well here's your time to shine let's start with these fucking questions all right um 223 ace writes do you have any forest gump moments with paul walker and what do you think about his recent sell for 2 million um, I don't know about the recent sell for $2 million. Uh, Paul Walker, obviously. I met Paul Walker for the first time. My boy, Hill Harper, who I was close with around 2000 to like 2003 or so. Um, he was in a movie called The Skulls. And Paul Walker was, you know, one of the stars in the movie. And uh, I met him there. I don't remember what year. What was fucking Fast and Furious? 99? I met... Paul at Motor X, which was the only place that was importing uh, R34, R32. I forgot what, what model number, uh, Skylines. But they were the only place that was, um, they were doing the turbo work and stuff and everything on the Skylines. They're bringing them from Japan, right side drive, everything. And um, I don't have any Forrest Gump moments. You know, I just, um, dude was super cool, met him, and um, he kind of did his own thing. Forrest Gump moment is, Two months ago, his daughter, Meadow Walker, slid in my DMs and hit me up for a grill. So that's about as deep as it gets with, with Paul Walker. Uh, I can't really uh, can't really call it. 
Anox123 writes, first off, love the show. This is the only podcast I listen to, period. I got a super short attention span, but you keep me interested after every episode. My question is, how do you feel about Detroit? And are you coming anytime soon? Any crazy stories about Detroit? I lived in the suburb outside Detroit my whole life. And I would love to purchase some VVS pens from you if you ever do come to Detroit. Uh, probably would never happen, but it would be tight. Um, what do I think about Detroit? Detroit is just a, I don't know. You know, I've never really been outside of Detroit except for like six mile, um, eight mile, four mile, that, that area. Um, been in Detroit like three or four times. Uh, a few of my friends were really, really big um, athletes at uh, University of Michigan, Wolverines. Um, shout out to Chris Howard, shout out to my boy Charles Woodson. And then um, was obviously there because of Eminem. And then most recently, about a year ago or a year and a half ago, I went to StockX headquarters in Detroit, took pictures and went around the city. And wow, in 20 years, that city has changed. Dan Gilbert has bought that whole fucking area. Uh, I know that Michigan is a legal state. Um, I brought VVS pens there before. I don't know. I, honestly, I, I don't. I Yeah, I highly doubt that's going to happen. So that's it for Detroit. Uh, you know my name writes... Who do you think has a better suspension overall in general between Porsche and Ferrari? Um, it's tough to say because Porsche doesn't make an exotic car. Uh, they have the 918 and they have the Carrera GT. I have to say this. For an exotic car, the Ferraris drive amazing. Um, they're tight. It's a close tie. But I have to say Porsche has a multi-billion dollar invested air suspension technology so you know i mean porsches are also amazing i don't know what we're talking about we're talking about old school we're talking about new school um i've owned both you know they're both uh they both have great suspension systems so uh but it's just two totally different companies um bok mech b-o-k-m-e-c writes i love the podcast ben with you being an la native and food connoisseur have you thought about having roy Choi on the pod um keep up the fantastic work listen man roy Choi is my fucking guy i haven't had time to really reach out to dude he's such a nice person love roy yes 100 percent. eventually i'll have roy on the show that's my guy um from Southeast with love. I'm sure this dude is a Southeast boy from, from Diego. Uh, he writes, San Diego or L.A. for Mexicano food. You know what? I just know L.A. food better, but I do know that San Diego might have better Mexican food. So that's what that is. Ran is the name. Flame since day one writes, Uncle Ben showing you some love from Sacramento. Thank you for all the free game. I've been tuned in since day one. It just keeps getting better and better. Definitely my favorite podcast ever. Question for you is, when are you releasing the Ben Ball I Did The Strain? I'm a photographer, video content creator based in Sacramento. Would love to get creative and be part of this movement. Also, have you been around Sacramento Food Spots? Thoughts on the Kings? Thank you again. God bless you and your family. Much love, Ran. Um, the Ben Ball I Did The Strain will be dropping in February. Don't know exactly when, but in February. In the Bay Area first. Uh, we have a photographer, we have a video guy for Bimbal did this train, unfortunately, sorry, I will keep you in mind, but meanwhile, why don't you email us at benballerpod at gmail.com, some photography, um, as far as food spots around Sacramento, I have really not, uh, Aria, who was on last week's episode, or last episode, she said she's gonna show me some shit in Sacramento, I don't know, I'm sure she knows all the gems, I'm pretty sure she's around all the rich fucking Russian people. Thoughts on the Sacramento Kings. I don't really have a lot of thoughts about Sacramento Kings. I do know that the cheapest floor seats I've ever been to in my entire life was at Arco Arena. Um, the new arena is beautiful. I've been there too. And the seats there are pretty cheap as well. But 500 fucking dollars for floor seats versus the Lakers in like, fuck, 2000, like 12. It was crazy. It's unbelievable. KC950. 302 writes saving money or making money troubles uh what is something someone in their 20s should invest in or do to help save or make money if you aren't making a ton already um kushta rhymes much love from iowa from iowa that's pretty dope man got a listener in iowa someone in their 20s that doesn't make a lot of money what should they invest in 
you know, I would say buy some cause toys, the open edition ones, but you know what? Because they're open edition, they could be made at any time. And then again, I don't know how much money you're talking about investing. So with that said, it's really hard to say. I think the safest thing for you to do would be to buy gold coins, American Eagle coins. Um, you can obviously invest in real estate or like that right now. Um, even at a smaller level, like Supreme box logo tees and hoodies and shit is, is just not, it's tough, man, you know, but that would be your safest bet is to buy some American Eagle coins. Um, me, Meech, Dimitri Salido Baller Review. Hey, what's up, Ben? Dimitri from Walnut Creek. Put all my homies on the podcast out here. Looking to get a C706 soon. How do you feel about vets on performance to cost value? And do you think the last front engine vet would hold any value down the road? Um, C706 is a fucking amazing car. You can fucking do a lot of work on this car for very little amount of money. So, um, again, performance to cost value is, is you know, it's not like a, a Skyline, but um, it's going to sound a lot better. You know, I like Vets. I've always been a fan of Corvettes, except for the, the 70s, 1970s, the years of, of any of the 1970 years. Um, up to about 85, I hated the Corvette between like 1970 to 1985. just wasn't a big fan of that Boogie Nights era Corvette. But the new Corvettes, I love um, any value down the road. It, I doubt it. I, I don't know. Can't really call it. It might take fucking 30, 40, 50, maybe 60 years for that to happen. So don't do it for that. Do it for a fun performance car. They handle okay. I'm not really sure. I haven't gotten nasty in a vet yet. Uh, Chilango de Por Vida, J Balvin. Uh, great podcast and shout out from Minnesota. Oh shit, Minnesota. Okay, that's what's up. Would you ever consider bringing J Balvin on the podcast? Also, would you consider working with any other reggaeton artist? I have worked with a few. Um, just work with Bad Bunny. Yeah, you know, if J Balvin had a time, you know, actually, you know, that's my dog. That's my boy. He would kind of do anything for me. If he had the time and I had the time to schedule permit, I would definitely fuck with J Balvin. That's my guy, Jose. Um... Julian Godinez, love from Idaho. God damn, this is fucking so dope. Listen, guys, if you are not from LA, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Miami, um, please ask more questions. Go leave a five star review and I will shout you out on the show. That's crazy because Idaho is just, that's just nuts. Anyways, hey, Ben, big fan since the reality show on YouTube. Let me correct you that you, that show was on Fuse and then it got dumbed down and brought and transferred to YouTube, so it was actually on a real channel before, um, when you come to Idaho, also, how come you only, you're the only celebrity without any IG fan pages, <laughs> I think we just talked about this, um, I just said I don't really believe I have fans and stuff, you know what, there actually is a couple weird random fan pages, I don't know where they are, maybe they're gone, I don't know, that's weird, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can, I, I just, I ain't there yet, to accept that. When am I coming to Idaho? Honestly, to tell you the truth, brother, I don't know if I'd ever come. Um, I've been to Idaho before uh, twice. Don't know if I'm going back. Don't know why someone hasn't started an IG fan page. Please don't. It's all good. It's all love. Mr. Keep It On Me. Uh, question for the best podcast. Yo, what's up, Ben? Checking in all the way from H-Town. Y'all missed my question in the last two week in wrap-ups, but it's all good. My question for you is, what, what new rappers... Are you listening to these days? Also, I'm a big gun guy. Do you have any favorite firearms? Um, new rappers. I was just talking about new rappers on the drive down here. And uh, the World Star guys are putting me up onto like YNW Melly. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know that. And um pop smoke uh i don't really know i don't really listen to a lot of new music so i can't really call it you know uh i don't really rock with like little skies of these guys little pump i don't really listen to you know like i think uzi might be the last new type of rapper i could think of off the top of my head when it comes to any favorite firearms right now um i have a sig uh p230 
four, I believe. You know, I'm not exactly fucking sure. It's so crazy. But it's just a real small pocket. It's a law enforcement only. Um, obviously, I love my Glock 42, my Glock 43. Those are some of my favorite. I just like the smaller pieces, man. It's just easier. I don't need a big-ass gun, you know. Um, I had a Desert Eagle a long time ago. It's just not really my thing, man. But anyways, um, Esh Money 99 writes, Listen to this on my commute to work. Funny, inspirational, and sometimes downright offensive. But one of the best podcasts out there, my question is, what is your skincare routine? There is no skincare routine, bro. Wash my face in the morning. Wash my face at night. I use clear cell pads at nighttime. 90% of the, of the time, you know, I rarely forget. Maybe one day a week I might. And that's about it. Yeah, I, I have decent skin for a fucking old man. It's funny. Um, King657 writes, best podcast. Listen to every episode. What motivates you to keep grinding? Very simple. My kids. Until my kids are good and, and they're old, I'm not going to stop doing it all for the kids. Uh, Paul Can, 1977. Love the podcast. What are the chances of getting a ride in your pista when you are in the OC? Um, if not here, my real question, why have Rolex watches shut up in price lately? Been trying to cop a low-end Rolex at a good price. It is impossible. Any input would be greatly appreciated. Rolex is smoking hot. It is absolutely gone to the most ridiculous. It's just very difficult to get. They're, they're, they're harder to get. And the price um, lenience has, has gone to shit. There is no maneuvering in price now. It is The prices have gone up. There's no discounts. Dealers are getting less. But you ready for this? You ready for this? And I don't give a fuck if Rolex has anything to say about this because I don't have a Rolex account and I doubt we'd ever get one. And it's not wishful thinking. Like, I don't give a fuck. Rolex isn't making less Rolexes. If anything, they're making more. It's just that fucking marketing where you can't have any and these stores look like they've been robbed because they have nothing in their fucking showcases and even used Rolexes are going up. It's just great marketing. But they are making more and more. So don't fall into the bullshit. What are the chances of getting a ride in the pista? I don't know, man. If I don't know you, I don't really have people in my car. It's just simple safety um, precaution. Astronaut Cartel writes, Hey, Ben, love the podcast, brother. Great variety of guests. Anyways, this is a business podcast, so can you help us with actual steps on how to grow a business? I have a clothing company. Won't plug it. However, I find struggles with manufacturers and such. We had Jeff, but you guys didn't really go into much depth love to hear your thoughts on this also been praying for the fam know they got some health issues with allergies um hope all is going great uh much love from the berg go Steelers. listen much love to pittsburgh much love to the hill projects and all my boys from out there in the 214 um don't understand what you said when we had jeff but you guys didn't really go much in the depth oh you mean like jeff staple you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, man. If you have a clothing company, l let me be real. If you have a t-shirt brand or a t-shirt and hoodie brand and you're doing printable items, it, technically, yeah, but it's not really a clothing company. Um, manufacturers, l listen, are your designs cutting edge? Do you at least have an amazing slogan, do you have, you know, an image, your, your people are buying into an image of a brand, do you know, they, they, they want to buy, they want to be, they want to get behind the brand, you know, so that's the most important thing, I couldn't get into depth unless you tell me exactly what you got going on, and you give me a little more insight, but it is the most competitive business in the world, even I ran a shot at it and was like, damn, I had ASAP Rocky help me out, and we decided to make it a kid's line to make it more successful. But yeah, man, it's 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 tough because you haven't given me a lot of uh I need to have some more variables. I need I need to understand what you got going on exactly. And obviously, you know, design there, there's so many different aspects to to owning a clothing business, and I just need to know more details. Uh King CJ08 Chicago Stories. Hey Ben, Chicago native here. I hear you always talking about the shy. Got any stories about here? I was a youngin' back in 05, 2010. 
Not really. I mean, I mean, I got a lot of love for my boy Fats. He's a Chicago legend. Um, a lot of crazy shit that happened in Chicago. Anything that was memorable definitely went with uh, my boy Fats. And uh, I, I was, I've probably been to Chicago like five or six times before I met Fats. You know, I shot an R. Kelly music fucking video out there. I toured out there. Um, went to Bulls games. But yeah, man, I just uh, shot to my boy Fats and his old OG crew. I had some amazing memories back then, you know. Um, I could definitely have some Heralds right now, that's for damn sure, or uh, Buffalo Joes. Um, crazy, I did, dated a chick from Evanston way back in the day, but yeah, I don't have anything I could really share right now that I haven't already shared on the show. Melvo09 writes, what's up, Ben? Showing love from Houston. What's your all-time favorite, Bear Brick? Um, I think it would probably be between the Coco Chanel and the Fendi Bear Brick. I think I've I've... I've said this before, not sure, but there it is again. PRQ30 writes, love the podcast, man. Just curious, have you ever, have you heard about Mac Miller's new project that his team announced a cute couple days ago? His newest song called Good News Gave Me Chills. Really beautiful. Are you talking about Circles? What are you talking about? His latest album? Of course. I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of confused of what you're talking about. Is there another project coming out or are you talking about... The little conspiracy that people think that Ariana Grande was singing on behind on one of the songs. I mean, I heard a bit of it. It is definitely good shit. Um, rest in peace, my man Malcolm, aka Mac Miller. Uh, Fuer, P H U E R 763, writes Ben, love the podcast. Question I've always asked myself about the wealthy how do you manage all your money? Multiple bank accounts, investments. What is the way of doing it and keeping your money safe? You know, I have a lot of different things. Um, not necessarily saying diverse. You know, I have a lot of money in art. I've I've been really good with my art. My art has gone up anywhere from three hundred to seven hundred percent, if even more than that. Uh, have a little bit of real estate, not much. Um, investing in small brands, where I don't really put out much money, and uh, I have ownership. And then later, I pretty much own the company for free, kind of something that Jordan Belfort was talking about, and I've done that. And, uh, you know, when I sell, it's just all profit. So um, I definitely have multiple bank accounts. I think I have seven different bank accounts. Uh, it's obviously spread apart, spread apart, obviously for FDIC purposes. But, you know, get yourself a wealth advisor. Um, shout out to my wealth advisor, Suleiman. And that's just the, the best thing for you to do. You know, real estate is, is people always say it's the safest. Um, and then some people say, hey, man, you know, living in a real estate investment is a liability. You know, everyone has different answers. I don't know what works for you. I know what worked for me. And that's exactly what I just said before. Listen, man, that's it for fan questions. And uh, we're going to be back in a minute. Today is January 23rd, 2020, and on January 23rd, 2017, the world lost Lee Quinn Odenat, father, brother, and son. Lee, aka Q World Star, was one of my best friends in life. He founded World Star Hip Hop on August 9th, 2005, with very little to no money. He had huge dreams and big ideas, and he executed them. I'm sure he never thought this company would be a $680 million company. I'm sure he thought it was big. It was going to be big and, you know, whatever. And I just don't think he thought it was going to be that big. I mean, shit, it's near a billion dollars. That's fucking crazy. He began his company four months after I started IF Co. It's crazy. Um, Q passed away of a heart attack. I wish... I had known a little bit more about his heart condition. I vaguely knew about it, but he didn't like to talk about it. A few of the homies did know about it, didn't want to take his meds, and just kind of pisses me off. I think he thought it slowed him down and just wish he was still here. Q wasn't into drugs at all whatsoever. Q was a very, very spiritual brother. 
all right, super deep, loved smoking good weed, he loved drinking good wine, and he loved his Jose Cuervo 1942 tequila. Q was the godfather to my firstborn son, London. He had three kids of his own, uh, two boys and a girl. I'll keep their names private. You know, I'm sure you could go out there and find whatever the kids' names, but I don't want to volunteer the information anyways. He was one of the most generous people I've met in my life. I miss him dearly. I miss him every day. At 3.37 p.m. today, me and the entire World Star fam are going to visit his gravesite, lay some flowers down, and say a prayer for him. 337, that's his number. You already know. Not that hard to figure out. Um, God bless him and his family. Rest in peace, Q. I love you, bro. We all miss you so much. Um, now, last night I hit Dave and Buster's, and uh, you know it's been it's been some months since I played Speed of Light, and I saw Jarvis Landry. He went uh, viral for playing Speed of Light, and fuels are like, yo, I can't tell you. Maybe more than a hundred people tagged me, and every time it was on his page, the check down, uh, ESPN, whatever, all that stuff, and it's like. Fools were like, oh, man, he's so fast, man. People were like, oh, he's killing it. And, you know, these news blog sites were like, yo, he's, look at his hands. He's quick. And I was like, this fool had like 180-something points with like 10 seconds left. Like, even if he caught the algorithm, he wouldn't have broke like maybe 250 or something. I don't know. But like, are y'all serious? On a bad day, I hit 350 when the machine is broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, but my top score is 511. You know, I busted a 422 last night just to see. But you know what? I'm going to fuck around and jump back in here this weekend or, you know, I don't know when. Maybe tonight. I don't know. But I'm going to record a better game just to show fools what time it is. I'm going to have to post it on the gram. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'd like to end this show on a good note. This is definitely my shortest podcast episode to date. It's one of them. But honestly, I'm fucking exhausted. You could hear it in my voice. I will come back fresh as fuck. I don't know if it's for the weekend wrap up. I'm not sure. It is my birthday. I think we should celebrate that without a podcast. I think you guys should catch up and binge. Um, I won't be watching the Pro Bowl. Give a fuck about the Pro Bowl. I am anticipating a great Super Bowl. Remember, if you are a close homie or family member, hit me to come by the trap for my Super Bowl party. It will be lit as fuck. So check it out. Um, I've lightly spoken about the cheating, bitch-ass, trash-ass Houston Astros. And now I'm reading the news that LA City Council, along with our mayor, has demanded the Major League Baseball Association to at least, at the very least, remove the 2017 and 2018 World Series titles away from the Houston Astros and the bitch-ass Boston Red Sox. At the very least, they're saying, just remove their World Series titles, okay? And they're saying they should obviously, you know, at best, or, you know, what they should do is grant us the title to the Dodgers, you know what I'm saying? I say, fuck you, and they should 100% give us the chip so we can go celebrate and have a fucking Dodger parade and eat some Dodger dogs, you know what I'm saying? Um, It's only right, okay? This isn't some fucking blame the referee shit. This is so much bigger. This is flat out blatant cheating. And I just I just can't even fuck with it. It's it's so fucking crazy. All right. Do the right thing, MLB. Give us our chip. Bring back some honor into pro sports. All right. Do the right fucking thing. That's it. Do what's right. Anyways, that is it. I'm out. God bless all you guys. Never forget, this is not your practice life. Hit me, Lakey. We out.